So uh, just tell me a little bit about yourself, Stephen, where you are and what you do. I'm Stephen. I'm a young age of 26. I live in Miami, Florida. Uh, I came here as an aimer, which is a missionary apprentice training program. I've been living in Miami for almost four years now, and I barely feel like I'm making traction for Jesus. And it's like, wow. So yeah. what kind of things are stirring up in Florida, so to speak? Well, we literally just had Hurricane Dorian scare. You know, thank God we didn't really get the hurricane. Um, it's like since I've moved here, there's been like several hurricanes. Matthew we got ready for, which is supposed to be a big one like Dorian. It ended up just going right past us. I literally like stood outside and watched a bunch of clouds go past us. It was real weird. Uh, and then Irma was another one. It was supposed to be like, you know, end of the world hurricane. And ended up coming through and being a category three. Um, did some damage, but, you know, obviously we were able to recover. And then we hear about Hurricane Dorian, uh, and it was scary. Um, right now, that's what's stirring up in the top of my mind, aside from everything else God's doing. How has this hurricane or threat of hurricane affected you and your community? So uh, we're really involved with a lot of young men and women. We really have a lot of opportunities to talk to a lot of people. That being said, when you hear Hurricane Dorian's coming, I'm not going to lie. I'm from Arizona originally, and the biggest thing we get is dust storms. So when I hear about it, I'm like, you know, getting a little choked up. So, okay, it's coming, you know, and then I'm like, I'm cool. I'm calm. And then I go home. I go to sleep. I'm a man, right, getting ready to go. I get to school. My dad calls me and says, hey, what are you doing? And I was like, anxiety just hit me. And I just started kind of crying. And I let, I, cried to, I tried to be private. One of my friends came and talked to me and it was an emotional time. And then Mike told me to read Joshua chapter one, when God um, told Joshua, you're going to lead my people as Moses did. And it's God's telling Joshua to be strong. And uh, the spirit moved me to realize I need to be strong and it clicked. And then from that moment on, I had a lot of opportunities. Me and my friends had a lot of opportunities to serve people at the school uh, to, to serve the families we love and to be able to actually just pray and love on people because when everyone's scared, uh, everyone's really open to prayer. It's really awesome. So, That's so, so we cool. have a lot of opportunity to talk. Yeah. yeah. You have a specific story about how God used you or someone during this crisis. Yes. Um, I want to brag on one of my friends, Asher. Uh, me and him had an opportunity to hang out a lot. I work at the school as a missionary and kind of a security guard for the school. It's kind of a weird duo, but, <laughs> but uh, I also got to help prepare, like, you know, get things ready for everything to come. We're turning tables, we're flipping things. Um, and one of the funniest stories, it's funny and not so funny, but funny at the same time. Um, there's a family I'm really close to. Her name's Miss Jackson. Uh, she has two sons and she has a mother they live with, or her grandmother they live with about 20 minutes from where we're at. And I'm really, really close to them. And her son said, hey, I'm getting the house ready. Can you come help me? I was like, oh, sure, no problem. So we just worked 10 to 12 hours before that. And then we're going to his house to get it ready. And we're just getting the shutters up. We're putting things. We're getting things ready. We're finding out we don't have enough for some things. So we're, you know, trying to mix match everything. And then we go inside his house. And his grandmother didn't really know what we were doing. And I'm walking into the garage. And she hears a shutter, which is something that protects the window from things breaking your windows. And she comes over and says, what's all that racket? I was like, oh, I'm just getting some shutters. And she goes, for what? And I was like, oh, this is weird. You know, so then she's like, found out there was a hurricane. Anyways, we go outside and we finish cleaning. We come back inside. And she said, uh, are you scared? And I wanted to say yes. But the reason I wanted to brag on Asher is Asher looked her in the eyes and said, no, I'm not scared. And then I was like, wow, okay, that was a teaching moment for me. I said, yeah, we're not scared because the Lord is with us. And then I said, can we pray with you? And we were able to pray with her. She's probably in her late 80s, early 90s, I'm assuming. I don't really know. Um, but as small as a story that was, it was such a big story to be able to stop and pray with someone that was genuinely scared. Um, and that's just one of my favorite ones because I'm so close to that family. Uh, another great opportunity I was able to have was – is during this storm, the guy I work for is also moving out of his brother's house because unfortunately his brother passed away. And so we're getting all these things ready and we're, his, his brother's wife or widow is, you know, on the other side of town and we're, we're over here in his old house and we're trying to go through all these things, sorting through all these things. 
and this guy, this guy I work for, his name is Rusty. He's like, hey, let's get things together for the hurricane victims. And it's so awesome to hear someone that doesn't follow God want to help others around them. And so mm-hmm. as, we, as we speak, I'm trying to mobilize prayer to help Rusty see who God is in his life. But what's really cool is since we were ready for the hurricane, but since the hurricane didn't come, us getting ready allowed us to build bonds and to have prayer with so much people around us. That's so good. What would your encouragement be to people listening to just help out everyone remember not to pass up opportunities when they come, maybe a crisis or when someone's at their lowest point to share Christ's love with them? What would your admonishment be? My encouragement would be like when John says, I must decrease so he can increase. He's talking about he has to move out of the way so Jesus can come in. Um, I would encourage whoever is listening to do the same thing. Um, in situations where it seems like we are frail and we're out of control, it's actually very true. We are frail and we are out of control. There is nothing we can do to stop a storm. Only God can. And that's the time, I think, when you can find the most peace and the most comfort and encourage everyone around us. You know, really look to God in times of stress, in times of turmoil, in times of not so sure. That's the time when we cast our burdens on him. And that's the time when he's able to work. When I finally got my tears done and I was like, this is it. I'm going to read Joshua. And I was like, what am I scared for? People were persecuted and chased and killed for following Jesus. And I'm scared because category four hurricanes coming to my <laughs> Of course, I'm scared. But like, you know, my problem isn't really that serious when you think about what's going on in the world. And so I would just say, get out of the way so Christ can move and lead you to your, your way. That's awesome. Well, hey, thanks so much, Stephen, for taking the time to share with us. That was very encouraging. Thanks. Thanks for having me.